Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be making another shark dog. My first one was a hammerhead shark dog. I had a lot of fun with it and I had someone in my discord suggest that I do a whale shark. Technically, I don't think this is a shark, but I thought it would be really cute to do it. And their idea was to make him really round and chubby, kind of like an English bulldog. So let's see how this turns out. Okay, so for this piece, we're going to be starting on the sewing first, and then we'll move on to clay. Um, you can see from the pattern that we're going to be making this uh, very chunky boy. So I left it as simple as I could. The body itself is really only made out of three sections, a left and right, and a belly piece. So I'm going to take the sides of the body, and we're going to sew basically down the back of it and all the way around the tail. You've probably noticed that I'm not using my normal minky fabric for this piece. I'm actually trying out suede fabric this time. Mainly because we're going to be doing a lot of painting on this fabric and I figured this would work a lot better for that. After we have the sides sewn together, we're going to take that belly piece and we're going to connect it in between where we haven't connected the sides of the body. So we have kind of an opening down here. We're just going to fill it. And then for the fabric for the legs, each leg has an inside piece and an outside piece, and we're just going to sew down the front of it. Now for these, we'll probably add more fabric to make them more chunky, but I kind of need to know what size to make them so I won't cut those out until I put the pieces together when we're assembling the doll. Lastly, I have like two little fins that I'm going to sew and add to the front legs later. And then we have fabric for the head. So this is just going to be sewn all the way around on one side and we're going to leave it open. The main reason I'm doing this is I want to cover the clay face in fabric once I have it baked. That way I have a more seamless connection between the head and the body. So what I'm going to do is once I have this sewn, I'm going to get my tin foil and shape it to roughly a size that will fit inside of this. And then I'm going to get started on covering it in clay. Once I have everything covered and I've smoothed it out, got a basic shape, I'm going to start marking out where the mouth is going to go. We're actually going to have the mouth um, kind of agape. So I'm going to basically sketch that out and scrape away the extra clay. Once we're done baking it, we'll do more detail on the mouth, but I figured this would be the easiest way to make an open mouth. So I'm going to get that figured out and then I'm also going to mark where the eyes are going to go. So I'm going to adjust the shape of the head to make up for it, add a little bit of clay, and then just use some glass pieces to mark where those are going to go. Once I like how everything is looking, I'm going to put it in the oven for a bake. So I'll probably put it in for about 45 to 55 minutes. Once it's out of the oven and has cooled to touch, I'm going to take my tools and kind of clean out some of that tin foil so that the mouth can have like an actual opening and it kind of concaves. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that fabric sock thing, I guess, <laughs> that we made, and we're going to slide our face inside of this. So if we made it correctly in size, it should be very taut and kind of stretch the fabric around it. 
So I'm going to push that in as best I can to get the fabric nice and taut where there's no wrinkles. And then we can kind of like separate it a little bit and put glue in between the fabric and the clay. We'll do that to the back side and then we're going to go to the front and open up the fabric. So we need to cut away a section of it so we can glue the fabric around the lips and have that mouth opened. I'm going to make sure the fabric is nicely tucked around the lips and we're going to let all that glue dry. Once it's dried, I'm going to take my epoxy clay and we're going to make a thin layer that will cover the inside of the mouth and then we can also go over the lips so we can blend the clay into the fabric to have a more seamless transition from clay to fabric. Now this clay will need time to cure, but honestly we're not really going to do anything to the face now until we start putting the piece together. So we're going to move on to making some clay feet. Now for the feet, these are going to have to be quite large. I mean he's pretty wide and chunky, he needs some solid feet to hold him up. So I'm going to start with pretty large balls of tin foil. I'm going to roll them out and we're going to add some wiring to this so we have something to hold on to. So I'm going to get these all figured out roughly the size that I want and then we're going to cover everything in a thin layer of clay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding the toes. So it's going to be kind of like normal dog paw, but obviously I'll adjust it a little bit to look more fishy or sharky. <laughs> but basically how I normally make paws is I'll start with the two big toes in the middle. These will be slightly larger than the outer toes. It just helps shape the foot a little bit more. So I'll get those added first and then I'll add the outer toes. So I'm going to blend everything together, make sure everything is nice and smooth, and then what we'll move on to is uh, kind of sketching out where the paw pad area is. So I kind of want to frame that a little bit, so I'm just going to add a little lines and go around that on the toes and the base of the foot. After that, I think I just need to add our claws. Now, everything is really nice and chunky and kind of soft looking with this piece, no real sharp edges. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the claws and just kind of make them like chunky little like bumps. So I'm gonna take little balls of clay and just kind of push them onto the front of each toe and use my tools to clean up the edge going around it and connecting it to the toe. Lastly, since we're not covering up the feet in fabric like we did with the head, I figured I'd add a bit of a texture to it. So I'm just going to take some mesh fabric and kind of add a little bit of a scaling texture to the tops of the feet. And then we're just going to put these in the oven for about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. Now we're going to wait and paint the face once we have it connected to the body and everything and paint it at the same time as the body. But for the feet, we're going to get that done now. Now the first thing that I need to do is actually primer our clay feet to be very close in color to the fabric that we're using. So our fabric is kind of a very light khaki color 
and I want to have that basically the same to start with so our colors will match when I add them to the fabric. So I'm going to get everything primered and then what we're going to do is we're going to start adding the colors to the tops of the feet. I'm aiming for kind of a sea foamy greenish blue color. Um, just trying to get as close to what I feel like would work for a whale shark. So again, I'm just covering the tops of the feet. Um, I'm going to leave the back of the foot the same khaki color and then we're going to paint the paw pad a different color as well. So I'm going to get that sea foam color in place and then we're going to add a few little dots here and there for fun. And then for our foot pads, I'm going to go for more of a peachy color. I want to add a tiny bit of pink to it, but I still want it to kind of feel like that khaki color. So I figured peach would work really well. And then lastly, I'm going to work on our claws. I'm going to paint them a nice gray color and then go around the uh, edge of them and kind of darken it up. So I'm going to kind of frame it a little bit so it looks like they're a bit separate from the rest of the foot. Once the paint has dried, I'm going to put a thin layer of resin over all of them to help protect the paint. So I'll set those off to the side to cure. So we pretty much have everything ready and we can start putting our doll together. So I'm going to start with his body and I'm going to start stuffing the tail section. Um, once I have that lightly stuffed, I have a wire frame that I'm going to start running um, inside of the body. So a section will go into the tail. And then I've cut really tiny holes where I've marked them for the legs and we're going to run the wires for the legs through those holes. Once we have the wireframe in place, we'll continue stuffing the rest of the body and make him nice and plump. Now, because the head is so broad, I decided to connect it in two separate places. So I have the wireframe broken up into having kind of two necks, but they're all going to the same head. So I've got some holes in the back of the head and we're just going to glue these wires in place to add the head to the body. Once we have that in place, we just need to add a little bit more stuffing to fill that gap and we can sew around the head to get it connected to the body. Now before we add the legs, I kind of want to shape his body a little bit more. Um, one real problem with it is his tail is very chunky, so I want to sew around the edges to kind of flatten it a little bit. So I'm going to do that and go around some of the fins as well and kind of tuck the fabric and pull it here and there. And then whale sharks kind of have these ridges going down their sides and their back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pinch the fabric and just sew along the sides in sections to make those ridges. This should make him look a little bit more like a whale shark and less like a tuna. <laughs> Anyways, once I'm done with making the body the shape that I like it, we can start adding the legs. Starting with the back ones first. I'm going to take the fabric for the back legs and start sewing them in place, going around the wires that are sticking out for the frame. Once I have the fabric in place, I can adjust the length of those wires and get our feet attached to the wire frame. So I'm just going to wrap those in place with a thinner gauge wire, and then we can glue the fabric around the bases of them.
Now you'll notice with how big the legs are, the fabric doesn't go all the way around. So I made another pattern that fits that gap and we're gonna attach that as well. So I'm just gonna sew this piece of fabric in place and we can also stuff our leg as we're closing it up. And then for the front legs, we're going to do basically the same thing. We're going to add the fabric to the body, add the legs to the wire frame, attach the fabric around them. Figure out how to fill that gap and then once we're kind of at a point of almost closing up the leg, we'll end up sewing our fins in place kind of around his like elbow region. We'll get that in place, finish stuffing, and then the legs are pretty much done. And we're ready to start painting the body. So I'm gonna mix up a pretty large batch of that seafoam green that we used on the feet. Try to get as close to the original color as possible. And we're gonna start sketching out where we're gonna have that color. So along his back, he's going to have a bunch of lines and dots. So I've roughly marked out where those are going to go and I'm going to avoid adding paint in those sections. So I'm going to do that first and then we'll frame around the rest of the body because I want the belly section to stay just plain fabric. I don't want to paint the belly. So once I have everything marked out, I can start filling in the rest of that section um, with the paint. So we're going to pretty much cover everything after we have the lines marked out for where we're going to add it. Now I did have to touch up the color a little bit after everything dried, but I really didn't have to do too, too much. Um, lastly, all I need to do is now paint the inside of the mouth. I'm going to leave that pretty simple. What I'm going to do is just fill it with black paint and um, kind of go around the mouth a little bit. We'll have to take a little bit more of that seafoam color and try and like blend it a bit into the black so it doesn't have a very harsh line. And then of course we need to add his eyes which are just going to be our glass little pieces. I'm going to paint the backs of them black and then we're just going to glue them in place. Okay guys, and here is our whale shark pup. I had so much fun with this one. I'm really glad I switched over to using suede for this because it doesn't have that fluffy aspect that the mink does. And it just looks so much more like a water creature now because he's not fluffy. <laughs> The painting came out really good. I'm pretty happy with this. I think I want to use this material on more of a dinosaur type creature in the future. So if you guys have any suggestions or literally anything for the fabric, let me know because I'd love to use it more. But yeah, I'm going to put him up for sale on my website. So if anyone wants to buy him, give him a new home. Check the links down below. There's a bunch of art supplies also linked down below. I don't know if I'll get the time to add the suede to the list, but um, I will attempt it. <laughs> 
see if I remember. But yeah, all those are usually what I use to make my art dolls, so you can check those out. Now these are affiliated links, of course, if you use them, it does help support the channel. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching, make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!